what is Iman? Well, I don't want to get into a huge kind of theological discussion on the issue, right? But let's focus first linguistically. Iman comes from the root word to feel, feel secure, okay? So it's a belief that you have conviction in. Now this conviction doesn't just mean intellectual, right? It's a spiritual type of conviction because you could be convinced but not be able to articulate your reasons why you're convinced. Let me repeat. You could be convinced about something but you may not be able to articulate why you are convinced. Let me give an example. Who believes their mother gave birth to them? Everybody, right? My mother gave birth to me. Right. Intellectually prove it. Everyone's silent all of a sudden. You can't prove your mother gave birth to you. Something to think about. Some people say, oh, I have a birth certificate. Well, that could be made up, right? That's just testimonial evidence, which is valid evidence, but it could be made up, right? I could say Obama is my father. I could give you a birth certificate. I could sign it, right? You may say, oh, I could do a DNA test, but you don't have a DNA test at home. You don't have a home DNA test kit. You don't have a DNA certificate that says 99% she's your mother. Your father told you. You have to believe him. Your mother told you. You have to believe her. The point I'm trying to say here is the kind of evidence that you have that your mother is your mother can be challenged. It doesn't mean though that your mother never gave birth to you because you know, right? It's one of those things like you know the real world is real. Right? We're not going to start talking about is this table real? Does it really exist outside of my mind? Yes, there are Western philosophical debates on realism and idealism. Is everything just in the brain if, or do things really exist outside? But forget that, we don't have that problem in our tradition, yeah? So I'm only giving you this example to show that you could be convinced about something but you may find difficulty in articulating it. Because I want you to realize there is a difference between knowing how to prove something to be true and knowing something is true. I repeat, there is a difference from knowing something is true and being able to convey that it's true. I don't want you to think it's the same thing. Just because you can't defend Islam, you can't rationalize or reason why Islam is the truth for you, it doesn't mean it's not true. It just means you may have difficulty in conveying it, difficulty in articulating it. It doesn't mean that it's not true for you. There are two different things. Just like I know my mom gave birth to me. I know it. Just like I know this table's real. Just like I know my name is Hamza. Just like I know the world is round, I know my mom gave birth to me. Can I articulate it intellectually? Maybe I might have some difficulty. I know because I know. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think this is only an Islamic thing. Even the Western tradition has things called self-evident truths. They call them innate truths. For example, I just finished my postgrad in philosophy and I studied one specialist module called the philosophy of psychology. And they had this idea that language is innate. It's called linguistic nativism. And it's based on the argument from the poverty of stimulus. And I don't want to bore you to death, but what it basically means is that a child learner learning and acquiring language, developing language acquisition, right? Has limited linguistic input, but what they express is far more complex than the input. So it's the data is limited, it's poor, it's impoverished, it's called the primary linguistic data. It's limited and poor, and it's, it's poor in quality. It goes through the brain, and what comes out is far more complex, right? For example, a child will have limited sentences, and it will develop grammatical rules based on limited sentences for sentences that the child has never heard before. What many linguists say and philosophers say that there is innate, there are natural domain specific structures in the brain that have linguistic knowledge like grammar. And that's why you have the famous Noam Chomsky who has discussed this and he is a, one of the main proponents for linguistic nativism. Yes, there are debates amongst them, but the most primary theory at the moment is that language is innate, it's inbuilt. So it's, a, it's innate. 
right? So they have this concept too that things are innate. So don't think, oh, we're just making this up just to justify the Islamic tradition. No, this is based on normal stuff. Even the world being physical, like this iPad being external to my brain, this is a self-evident truth in Western philosophy. Because they had a huge problem about the physical world. <laughs> like, is it real? <laughs> right? Realism versus idealism. Is this, is this iPad really outside of my brain? Of course it is, Hamza, I can see it. Yeah, but maybe you seeing it could just be in your brain, right? Maybe our brain is on Mars and there's an alien with metal probes in our brain making us think and feel what we're thinking and feeling right now. So they had a huge debate. So some of them said, it's self-evidently true. What about the fact that you could trust your mind? Now the reason I'm mentioning this, brothers and sisters, is to show that the Western and Eastern tradition has adopted this concept of self-evident truths, right? The things are self-evidently true, you don't have to prove them, we know, right? For example, trusting your mind. The whole of science, read this up for yourself, okay? Read the works of Professor Thomas Nagel, Mind and Cosmos, other people and philosophers, that one of the main assumptions or the main self-evident truths for science is that you have to trust your mind. Because if you don't trust your mind that it can eventually formulate truths, then you can't trust science. Because the minute you do science, it assumes that you have a mind that can eventually acquire truth. It's an assumption. You have to start with the fact that you could trust your mind, and then you end up doing science. Now you can't say, well, science can prove you could trust your mind, because that would be a circular argument. You're arguing in a circle because you first have to admit that you trust your mind before you do any science. This is called a self-evident truth. They have to accept it. They just have to accept it. Now, the reason I'm mentioning these things is to show that there is things that are self-evidently true and you know they're true, but maybe you can't articulate that they're true. And the idea of things being self-evidently true is a universal phenomenon from science to religion, to philosophy. Everyone accepts that there are things called self-evident truths or innate truths. And this links to the idea of the fitra, but we'll discuss this a little bit later. So, my point here is that we believe we have iman, which means basically from the root word for something that is secure. We have secure belief in the fundamentals of Islam. So what are the fundamentals of Islam concerning iman? To believe in Allah. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in His names and attributes. We believe He, he is transcendent. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique. We believe He's uniquely one. We believe that He deserves to be worshipped. He's the only deity worthy of worship. Right? These are fundamental truths for us. We believe in Allah. We believe in the prophets and the messengers. And we believe in the finality of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe in the angels. We believe in Allah's angels. In the revealed books, the Quran, the Torah, the Injil. We believe in the day of judgment. Every single one of us is going to be accounted, taken to account by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we believe in divine decree and predestination. Now let's summarize what divine decree and predestination is. Allah knows everything. He knows what has happened and what will happen. God has recorded all that has happened and all that will happen. Whatever Allah wills to happen happens and whatever He wills not to happen does not happen. And Allah is the creator of everything. This is, is, is the summary of believing in the divine decree and predestination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.